Well, hi, my name is Andy Tidy, and welcome to another episode of Life at 2.3 miles an hour. This particular video is a little bit out of step with most of the canal based material that I normally cover. And it's almost inevitably going to end up in the odds and ends playlist. We've travelled north to the Scottish borders and we're staying in an old fishing lodge come folly on the banks of the River Esk. It's that sliver of land between Hadrian's Wall and Scotland. Well, we're staying at the Netherby Coop House. It's a 250 year old folly which you can see behind me. And as I read about the history of this place, I discovered a connection to James Brindley. It's not canal related, but a discovery like that deserves a bit of a look, don't you think? Well, back in 1770, the local squire set up a salmon fishery here on the River Esk. And it was a project which involved a weir right the way across the river. Unfortunately, the first version failed and was swept away in floods as did the second. Now at that time James Brindley, the eminent civil engineer, had just completed the Bridgewater Canal, so he was brought in to advise. And he suggested that they build a bigger dam slightly further upstream and made in a shape of a bow, better able to withstand the forces of the River Esk in flood. Sadly Brindley's attempt also failed in 1782. And I guess they thought that if the incredible James Brindley couldn't come up with a workable solution, no one could. So no one bothered to try again and the fishery came to an end. Initially the coop house was built as part of the fishery. And then it was used as a folly in the grounds of the local lord. And finally it was converted into living accommodation for the local employees. So from about the 1780s till about the 1880s the place stood empty and then it was pressed into service as accommodation for one of the local shepherds and that continued till about 1930 and then the place was abandoned completely. Well for the next 70 years the place stood empty and it went to rack and ruin. The big bay window at the front fell out, the roof fell in and basically there was nothing left of it. That was until the Landmark Trust stepped in in 1992. They took a long lease on it, they rebuilt it sympathetically and it acquired Grade 1 listed status. And so since that time it's been used for holiday lets and very popular it is too. And there's something quite mesmerising about watching the floodwaters of the River Esk rushing past the bay window, hurtling on their way from the mountains to the sea. The main working area of the fishery is right behind me. It's that area in front of the cottage. These days it's all covered in silt, but if you scrape it all away, you can still find the big flagstones.
So in this week's video there is no reference to the UK's inland waterways network, just a reference to James Brindley. Most of the time we think of him as a self-taught engineer, an absolute genius. But here for a change we come across one of his failed projects. Well I get the feeling in this case he was actually the engineer of last resort. So. I wouldn't judge him too harshly. Anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed this short video which has an oblique reference to inland waterways and is an opportunity to carry some lovely drone footage of what is a quite spectacular holiday let. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all soon. Cheerio!